Sponsored by something that maybe couldn't normally be done or nobody has taken an interest at. I like giving back to the ones that nobody wants. From here, Seeing the Need, Finding the Solution 2012. Where do we go from here? Mental illness campaign. We're talking about three different parts uh, that are affecting our valley and people and citizens in our valley. Uh, mental illness as it relates to health disparities that are associated with mental illness. We're talking about whole health, taking care of the whole person, mind, body, and spirit. And we're talking about solutions. And uh, with that solutions comes a uh, gentleman who is the CEO of People of Color Network. Welcome, Tomas. How are you doing? Great. Fantastic. Thanks. Uh, Tomas had uh, kind of brainstormed after this year uh, in reference to, you know, you know, we couldn't figure out a, 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 a title for the show. And, and, and I remember uh, on the phone with him on the weekend, and we were like, well, you know, where do we go from here? And, and that's really what it is, is where do we go from here? We're talking about integrated health. Uh, we're talking about a lot of different aspects. But, uh, you know, for the couple that comes down from, say, Cleveland, uh, they've never heard of People of Color Network, give us a little background on what you guys do. Well, People of Color Network is a, a network organization uh, that provides behavioral health services to people who are, chal are challenged with mental illness or behavioral health challenges and other kind of uh, health, complex health needs. Um, we are now um, delivering um, primary care services in an integrated fashion in different ways. And so we're moving towards integrated health care as a network. We are contracted with our regional behavioral health authority uh, uh, that uh, Magellan Health Services of Arizona that contracts with us to deliver these mental health and behavioral health services in the community. We have uh, a little under 250 employees and three direct care clinics where we provide services for um, adults who have severe mental illness and a children's department uh, to deliver high needs case management for uh, youth and children who have serious behavioral health and uh, challenges and complex needs uh, in our community. And these are folks that are eligible for Medicaid. Um, and our Medicaid program here in the state of Arizona is ACCESS. And so they're um, uh, covered through ACCESS to receive those services that we, we offer. We also contract with a number of providers in the community 
a couple of dozen nonprofit providers that deliver general mental health, substance abuse, and other kind of behavioral health services to the folks that are in, uh, enrolled in our in our network. And um, People of Color Network is uh, almost going to be 12 years old, and they were founded uh, by local nonprofit social service leaders that saw the need to bring together uh, or an organization and create a network that focused on addressing health disparity issues for people of color in the community. And when you're talking about health disparities as it relates to integrated health, um, explain that to somebody. What exactly is a health disparity? Well, for example, uh, uh, a health disparity is when you have someone who's struggling with mental illness. And I mentioned this in several shows before, where one in four individuals in, in this country are experiencing a, a mental illness or have experienced mental illness at some point in their life. Now, when you look at those individuals that are struggling and challenged with mental illness, um, they, they, uh, their life expectancy is cut short by 25 years on average uh, throughout the country. And so that's an epidemic that's happening in, in our country, and people don't realize that. And higher and, in Arizona. And in Arizona, it's closer to 30 years. So wow. when you have someone who's suffering with mental illness, whose life expectancy is cut short, and when you stop and think of one in four, you're, you're talking about probably somebody within your family, a coworker, your neighbor. Uh, you don't have to look too far with that statistic to realize and understand it. It's probably somebody that you know or somebody that's dear and, and near to, to your heart. And um, so this is everybody's problem. We all have to be concerned about uh, the health and wellness and mental health of people around us, including ourselves. Um, and everyone has mental health. Well, it's a matter that. of d how well is it and, and, and do you take care of it? And when it's compromised or challenged, how do you get on that path of recovery so that you can uh, uh, turn that into uh, living well? You know, 30 years, what a difference between a child uh, with a mother or a father or even an aunt and uncle. But, it, you know, speaking of, of passing away at 40 compared to 70, uh, that what what a what a big difference that is and integrated health uh, there's some other aspects that uh, we pulled some stuff uh, Magellan as you had mentioned Health Services of Arizona did a study uh, with the health risk assessments and uh, they're talking about different stuff like diabetes and uh, 40 to 60 percent of those with schizophrenia of overweight 75 percent of people who suffer from uh, mental illness smoke so obviously they're increased uh, in that area in reference to 15 percent have diabetes and have an unemployment rate of 78 percent integrated health explain what's going on with that in our valley what's the goal and, and what's that process well linking all these together and getting to integrated health health care solutions uh, you know the part of the health disparity is uh, mental illness and and its impact and association to chronic health conditions and those chronic health conditions often lead to that person uh, life expectancy being cut short so you go from the health disparity and understanding what that is and acknowledging that it's an issue uh, and then you go to let's focus on the whole person for for too long Phil we have treated the mind here the body here and sometimes we address the spiritual component of someone's health and wellness and what that role that plays in, in healing in, in recovery so now we're putting the focus on the whole person let's look at the whole person not just the mind because they're linked together and if we look at the whole person then we start looking at well what are some integrated health care strategies where we bring uh, behavioral health and primary health care together uh, and organize it in a way that we can deliver better care to someone to produce better outcomes at the lowest possible cost within their community, within their setting, within their culture, within their language, so that it makes sense for that person. And we provide the services that they need to, to uh, live life, life well. You know, a question for you, I've, and I've, I have the privilege, and for some reason God has us spending a lot of time together for the last year, and hopefully continues for, for many years to come, but uh, you mentioned the, for, for the longest of time, it's been the mind here, the body here, and the spiritual and here, and being on this side of the table and as well on your side. Uh, how tough has it been to bring in the spirituality part from a politi PC uh, type of way, from being politi politically correct and not being able to offend somebody over here or guidelines over here, but so necessary in the 
element of recovery. Uh, how hard has it been in to get that element across without uh, uh, having it uh, be a, an issue? Well, it's, it's, a it's a tough challenge because it's almost like taboo. You just don't talk about that spirituality and the role that plays in someone's the role that spirituality and faith plays in someone's health and wellness and their well-being, especially when they're challenged with uh, a mental health issue or a chronic con health condition or things that really test people's lives and, and um, patients and that lead to uh, stress and anxiety and depression. And, and so, uh, but if you think about it, you know, the 12-step recovery program is grounded in, in a higher power in that whole process. And so the way we focus on that at People of Color Network, we focus on the role that culture plays. And so based on that person's culture that often is linked to their faith or their spirituality and how we use that culture to uh, help them recover from a mental illness or a substance abuse issue uh, or a chronic health condition. Um, and then looking at even some traditional healing uh, strategies in terms of sure. holistic care and, and how that informs uh, that person and that family on what are the best strategies to use to help them in, in their recovery. Uh, that's how we bring that in and, and it fits in uh, with our approach. Uh, it, it's funny you mentioned about, about recovery and, and the 12 steps, and, uh, which I know very well. I come from a life of recovery and very blessed uh, to have that a part of my life. Uh, but you know, one of the phrases in that element of uh, recovery is uh, we straighten out spiritually first, not mentally and physically first, until the spirituality part is taken care of. Then we straighten out or begin that path in reference to mental and physical. Uh, it's a spiritual disease in reference to uh, recovery. Um, one thing I, it always boggles me, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned it coming from your side of the table in reference to recovery and how that's mixed in. And uh, It's amazing how many people, when they really, uh, you go to any hospital, somebody who's suffering, um, you know, whether they're praying or they're sitting there together praying and, and all that kind of stuff. But also on your side, since it uh, a, has a federal aspect to it, there's a lot of funding that goes on in the legislature to, uh, you guys got a, you know, a lot of advocacy and fighting to do too for these people and our citizens of our valley. With a big sign on that thing that says, In God We Trust. Uh, with that, my name is Phil McElvey and we'll be back with Tomas Leon, CEO of People Color Network after these commercials. There's no stigma or discrimination against the heart, the liver, the kidney, even the gallbladder. Doesn't even have a job. Yesterday, depression was kept in the dark. And bipolar disorder was your best friend's mother's problem. But the tide is turning. We're stopping the stigma. We're coming out. Our goal is to make the discussion of mental dis-ease cool and trendy. No kidding? Me too. No kidding. Me too. No kidding. Me too. It's time we gave the all-American brain some peace of mind. Living with mental illness is a challenge, but it makes me stronger. Some would say I'm crazy. I would say I'm enlightened. Some would say I have a disability. I would say I have special abilities. Some would say I'm far from ordinary, but I'd say I'm extraordinary. One in four adults are affected by a mental illness. To learn more, visit oneinfour.info. I'm Jeremiah. I work at Chrissy Ski and Board in Lakeside, Arizona. These are the very convenient, small cars. They get the job done. Well, I always go skiing, but I didn't have a, something like this. Convenience, uh, speed. You have your kids in the back, right? But you're still able to carry your skis, carry your board, whatever you want. 
while also having your kids in the back. Get it, it gets the job done. We are 100% committed to preventing suicide. We represent 100%. We represent 100%. We represent 100%. We represent 100%. But in addition, where do we go from here? We're going right back to Tomas Leon, CEO of People of Color Network. We were talking about integrated health. We were talking about spirituality. We were talking about health disparities, kind of all the three in one. Um, Tomas, before we lead into our next uh, guest today, uh, we left off with talking about spirituality. We talked about uh, In God We Trust, which is what we're founded on in reference to money and nature-wise, in reference to that, that process. Um, we talked about uh, it's been difficult in reference to the spirituality aspect. Uh, integrated health, what's coming, uh, what's coming out to the community uh, that they can look forward to that's in the works? Well, I think what you're seeing right now, Phil, throughout the country and here in Arizona is, is a transformation of our system of care. And uh, uh, integrating the behavioral health and medical and primary care services and that holistic care as well uh, that incorporates uh, the spiritual component in terms of someone's health and wellness and, and especially those challenged with mental illness and, and putting them on a path of recovery. Um, and so what you're seeing is a, a number of uh, models and approaches that are being created and developed and implemented and pilot tested. We ourselves are partnering with uh, uh, Magellan Health Services of Arizona, Maricopa Integrated Health Care System, our People of Color Network, uh, Choices Network, um, Southwest uh, network and uh, Partners in Recovery Network and we all are, are creating uh, integrated health homes uh, in our direct care clinics and so where we're bringing in the primary medical medical care with our uh, behavioral health services and mental health services together and other support services to um, enhance care coordination for the individuals that we're caring for in, in those clinics and so we uh, have been in the development phase, are now in the implementation phase, uh, and uh, it's exciting to see uh, what's taking place. The conversations are changing, policies, approaches, how we coordinate care for an individual, focus on whole health care uh, is changing, so our focus is changing. And uh, the individuals that are part of this early implementation phase that are benefiting from this, are really just telling us, look, we appreciate uh, being looked at as a whole person, not just a collection of my symptoms um, or my diagnosis. And so it's an exciting time right now uh, to be in that transformation phase right now and, and just really innovating and finding different integrated healthcare solutions to, to, to offer to, to the people we have the privilege of serving through our, through our network and in the community. And likewise, and in connection, part of seeing the needs uh, mission and part of what our responsibility to do is to integrate for-profits and non-profits together for the benefit of the community that have this same goals and objectives for each other. Uh, we were talking about uh, a little bit of funding and different stuff before and legislature. And with that, we're going to bring in Al Schaff. He's also the uh, uh, CFO of Seeing the Need as well as partner with B2B CFO Partners, correct? Welcome, Al. Thank you, Phil. And I think I butchered your name. I think I, I've said Schaff instead of Schaff. Oh, it's close. But uh, we'll know, stick with that, NBA. That's a little bit easier up my alley. That would be fine. <laughs> uh, um, one reason I brought you on this aspect of it was uh, when it comes to uh, being a CFO, a lot of people don't understand the difference between a CEO and a CFO, kind of like an EKG and an EGG type thing, you know. Um, CFO, for the normal person out there, what's the simplistic way to describe what you do? 
Uh, a chief financial officer is basically somebody who helps a company, who assists a company, whether as, as an employee or as a consulting CFO, which I am, uh, to understand what their business purpose is, what their strategies are. Uh, helps to reduce the stress on the business owner by allowing them to focus more on why they went into business in the first place, rather than trying to you know, do the check deposits, do the accounting. Uh, do all the administrative tasks. You know, part of my role is to get that, that business owner to you know, figure out why they're not sleeping at night because their stress, the stress that they're feeling translates to their employees. My wife in the back of the show right now is going, why doesn't he sleep? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a whole series of questions that I, I, I generally ask clients uh, in terms of you know, what keeps you up at night. You know, it's funny you mention that because I, I did read some research and you actually have on your website, which is a beautiful website, you can type in uh, a zip code, say in Arizona, it pulls up 16 CFOs, actually 20, but some of them are from California and different yes. aspects on there. But one of the things you had in the bottom right hand corner is if CFO, if you're a CFO and you come on board with our company, uh, let us show you what are some of the reasons that will make your spouse happier. Absolutely. And I mean, elaborate on that. Well, it's, it's the sort of thing that you know, if, if a business owner has a question in their own mind, many times they can't go to their spouse because that question, the answer to that question may be a very difficult one. Do I, you know, do I restructure the company here? What's my bank lines? They certainly can't go to other employees of the company because that's even scarier. So the role that I will play and many times I get that call Saturday afternoon, Sunday evening, where my clients think that I have no social life, which is probably more or less correct. <laughs> but uh, you know, I'll, I'll get that call. You. Yeah, I'll, I'll get the call. You know, from them to say, I'm thinking of doing this. What do you think? And we'll go through the process. We'll try to figure out, you know, what the ramifications are. You know, if it goes to its logical conclusion, uh, what's the success probability? of that, trying to deal with facts and figures and being honest with themselves, things that they may not be able to tell their family or other employees in the company. Oh, well, uh, one thing I loved about working with you in the very beginning is, is and, and I made a statement to you, and, and it's, uh, you know, I swim the shark tanks a lot with what I do. It's part of the process. By the way, yes, you do. And, um, and, and, and your first response was, that's okay. And I, it was somewhere along the lines of, I don't mind being in there. And I really, really like that about you in reference to that, that, that levelness and that backing. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a CEO and as an owner of a company, um, we, I, I have the privilege of working with many different huge organizations mm -hmm. that do lots of services, but are involved uh, with very prominent people, very uh, people that are in positions of affluence. And like you said, it's not all the time that your employees that I can turn around and explain to them exactly what all this means right here. So uh, with that, I'm going to piggyback off and, and, and go back to Tomas and go, then go back mm -hmm. to you a little bit. Uh, how important is it for somebody in your position to have a CFO? Uh, it's critical. I mean, you know, just in terms of managing and monitoring our whole financial health of the, of the company and monitoring how, we're, uh, how resources are coming in, how they're being utilized and spent. And, you know, as a nonprofit organization, even though we're a nonprofit, we're still a business. And so, and, and CEOs of nonprofits right. have wives too, or spouses too, and we worry about those things. <laughs> but, you know, the, the CFO plays a real critical role in the success of, of any business. And with respect to integrated healthcare and trying to evolve those business models, um, uh, nonprofits that are moving towards integrated healthcare have to change their financial models, their business models. And so this is an area that also, we talk about the service delivery, but then, you know, behind the scenes, it's the model of the business. It's the financial modeling. It's the strategies that you put in place and payment structures and things have to change in order to uh, be able to uh, cover the services that we're delivering. And so there's some investment strategies that we have to put in place. And, and so um, the need for this level of expertise is really, really critical for the nonprofit community. Nonprofits, there's uh, well over 20,000 nonprofits in the state of Arizona. Absolutely. And so they, they add to a significant contribution, they make a significant contribution to the economy and well-being of our economy and deliver critical services. So 
I appreciate the services that, that B2B offers, and, and uh, I'd like to figure out how we can connect those services to the nonprofits within our <laughs> network so that they're well and they can keep delivering on the Actually, promise. Actually, some things will roll out. I'm going to roll this in so we can get this before we roll out. Is uh, A couple of different things about B2B, CFO, uh, 5,000 fastest growing companies in the U.S. awarded the 2011 Blue Ribbon Award by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, awarded the ACES Fat, or excuse me, the ace fastest growing companies, uh, the only CFO firm in the new Wall Street Journal book. Uh, we have aligned ourselves with them in a multiple number of ways. Uh, there's going to be some things rolling out here where all three of us actually will have a chance to uh, uh, work together on uh, some ideas and doing some things. As, as you can see on the screen, uh, there is Al Shap's uh, email address and as well uh, a logo. Um, but more so than that, uh, we bring them on. We're going to be, uh, Al works with a lot of small businesses as well, too. So one of the things uh, that we're going to be doing is offering small businesses uh, financial analysis uh, yes. as free to see maybe what can be done differently so your business can be more successful. Uh, 80 to 90% of charitable giving is done by citizens and individuals, not companies. So if the businesses aren't flourishing, then the people aren't getting jobs, and then the causes aren't getting met. And the more that like people like Al, and the more that mindful people who run organizations like Tomas, the more that we all work together in being able to make those companies flourish, the better we're gonna be able to bless the city that we live in, which is Phoenix. Uh, in this case, and, and ultimately the cities around us. Um, some stats we talked about, and, and Tomas had bring it up a little bit in reference to small businesses here. Yeah, we talked about the other show, $50 billion was spent on the Super Bowl, where back in 2009, about $10 billion. So he got, and everybody thinks the economy is going down, where if you look at that, that revenue stream, but did you know that 50% of charitable giving, went, it went down 50%? Where... 50 billion, 40 billion higher went up to advertising, seeing the need, finding the solution. Uh, um, I'm going to end it with this. When you got done with seeing the need, yes, um, honest answer, and we haven't pre-taped this, so I'm, I'm curious to know the answer. Uh, Are what you was, a little bit afraid of the answer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's take, we got about a minute left if we could sum it up that quick. What was your overall view of mixing in the financial part with what we do in reference to seeing the need? Well, one of the things as a CFO, I need to be part of the organization, you know, and, and to, you know, blend in my skills with the skills of the company and the owner and the significant uh, people within the business. Mm -hmm. um, frankly, you know, most of the time, it, I'm not a creative person. You don't want your CFO to be creative, and your organization is ultra creative. And, you know, part of my role was to, you know, take, you know, get the numbers to the point that they're real, that you can use them to run your business. And I was very pleased to see, you know, the outcome of, of you know, taking the information. You've got a good staff and, uh, you know, trying to, you know, to pull together, you know, you know all the resources that we needed. Awesome. Al Schapp, uh, CFO, B2B. Uh, going to be coming on here some more. We have Tomas Leon, CEO, People Color Now 2012. Where do we go from here? We'll tell you where we're going to go. Back out in the community, we're going to get some of that money back wasted on advertising. See you next week.